Good day. So this would be my first recorded lecture video for you to cope with the requirements that I try a synchronous mode of uh, delivering the quality of education you deserve. So just please excuse initially my hair as it is very biblical. Anyway, it suits the season of land. So without much ado, let me now go into chapter two, nature and effects of obligation. I as I have been stressing to all you, this is the most important part of the law on obligation. This is what Justice Urado refers as the meat of obligation. Because if in chapter one, what we did learn is how to determine the existence of an obligation arising from those different sources, in chapter two, we will learn now how. How do we get to fulfill the prestation of that obligation that we have established to exist arising from any of those sources. So it is more of an instruction in regard to making the prestation uh, of the obligation fulfilled in a manner that would be required by the laws or by the agreement. You will find out why it is important, why is it necessary for us to comply strictly with how it should be, as there would be certain rights and obligations between the parties that may arise therefrom. So let us now start off by trying to classify the obligations based on the prestation. All right. So you remember what the prestations are. What are the prestations? To give, to do, and not to do. Included here, of course, just to, again, uh, remind you, is not to give. So there are only four objects of obligations. To give, to do, not to do, which includes the prestation not to give. Now. On the basis of these prestations, the civil code classifies the obligations. So obligations classified based on the object of this obligation or the prestations. All right. So if it is an obligation to give, then we refer to it as a real obligation. So. If you get to be asked to define what real obligations are, they are obligations with the prestation to give. On the other hand, personal obligations are referring to those okay, whose prestation would consist either of to do or not to do which again includes not to give. Now, since there are two types of personal obligation, it is necessary for us to distinguish one from the other. If it is an obligation to do, it is referred to as a personal positive obligation. And if it is an obligation not to do or not to give, it will be referred to as the personal negative obligation. So if you are asked again, how do you define a personal positive obligation? Then uh, it is the obligation with the prestation to do. What is an obligation that is a personal negative? It is referring to the obligation with the prestation not to do or not to give. Now, 
why is it important and necessary for us to have these classifications? Bakit kailangan pang ihiwalay at abigyan ng mga pangalan ang bawat isa sa kanila? The reason is the provisions of the law on obligation, particularly chapter 2, note, will either be applicable to just one among these two types of obligations or may be applicable to both. So, as a student, you must know what are the provisions that are exclusively applicable only to one and not to the other, and those provisions that may be applicable to both. So, there are provisions that are and should only be applied when it is an obligation to give. Real obligation. There are provisions that are applicable only to personal obligations. And there are obligations that may be applicable only to positive personal, but not to personal negative obligations. So this is the reason. Because if you get to commit that mistake of applying a provision that should have been applied only to a real obligation, but you did also apply it in resolving a legal issue involving a personal obligation, then that would lead you to an erroneous resolution or conclusion. Okay? So, as we go on, we will just have to now separate the discussion on the basis of this classification as I have pointed out. Meaning to say, we will not go to the provisions uh, chronologically as they are arranged in the civil code, but rather we will try to cluster initially, okay, provisions that are applicable only to real obligations and after which we get to discuss also provisions that are only applicable to personal obligations. Now maybe uh, I will point out those provisions that will be applicable to both. Uh, very clear? All right. Siguro naman ano? Ah, yung mga inaantok-antok nga dyan. Makinig kayong mabuti. Let us now start off with real obligation. So, I have that whiteboard here. I will write it down so that you will not be confused. So, we will just talk about provisions that are applicable to real obligation. So, Please forget about personal obligations first at the moment. Now, real obligation is further classified on the basis of the object this time of the prestation. Well, you remember the distinction between the object of the obligation and from the object of the object of the obligation or the object of the prestation? So if you do have the obligation to give a car, what is the object of the obligation? To give. What is the object of the prestation or the object of the object of the obligation? The car. Now, the classification of real obligations would now be based on the nature of each of the objects of the prestation. Ano bang klaseng object of the prestation yaan? The thing that is to be delivered or given in fulfillment of the prestation to give. Now, under 
current civil law, there are actually two that are expressly recognized by the provisions. So I repeat, there are two that are expressly provided for by the provisions of the civil code. Why am I saying expressly recognized or provided for by the provisions of the civil code? Because we will find out later, as per the position of Tolian Pino, there would be the third kind. Para di namang tao ito ngayon, may babae, may lalaki, may alangamin. So ganun din yan sa mga objects of the prestation. We will then classify them into the two major recognized and governed things and find out the third kind. Okay. So what are the three different types of things that could be the object of the prestation of an obligation to give? All right. So the first one is what we refer to as the uh, specific. Okay. A specific. A specific object or sometimes it referred to as the determinate determinate objects now the other is what you call now the generic generic or what we call the indeterminate in the terminate object all right now later we will introduce you to the third. The third, unfortunately, is something that may not have been foreseen by the authors of the civil code. But true enough, from the position of Tolentino, it is necessary that we get also to recognize and be able to govern it. So later, we will find out what it is. Let us now first talk as to how we get to determine a thing to be specific or a thing that is generic. So, what therefore would be the criterion or maybe criteria? Okay. A thing is determinate or specific if it has been segregated, separated, and has become unique or one of a kind, segregated or separated from its class or genus. So, hinihiwalay mo yan sa class niya, sa klase niya, as a consequence of which it becomes unique and one of a kind. Let us give you some illustrations. A car. Now, you are referring only to the genus, cars, any type, any kind, or uh, uh, any brand of a car would do. But when you now refer to a car with a certain plate number that is owned by Din Ulan, uh, which is color this and that, you are now therefore getting one of the class or genus and separating it, making it therefore unique and one of a kind. You get the point? Uh, another illustration. This whiteboard marker may be a part of a class or genus. But once you refer to this whiteboard marker separate and become distinct from the millions or thousands of whiteboard marker, it becomes now unique, one of a kind. That is what you call a specific object. So, what is the most important characteristic of a specific object? It is unique 
It is one of a kind. There is no other. So an object becomes that unique, one of a kind, if you separate, if you, what you call now, uh, separate or take it away from its class or genus. However, in generic, in determinate, you're only referring to one of its class or genus. So, a car, that's it. If the object of the prestation to give would consist only of you promising to deliver a car, then you are entering into a real obligation to deliver a generic or indeterminate object. But if you committed to deliver the car of Gintulan with this plate number, with this uh, uh, color, uh, with this uh, type, then you are now entering into a real obligation to deliver a specific thing. You understand? Very clear, huh? All right. Now, uh, let us some uh, let us try to go through some uh, uh, examples para mas malinaw sa inyo. All right. Uh, I will give you a Rolex uh, uh, gold watch. Is that specific or generic? Would it involve now a real obligation to give a generic object or a specific object? So obviously, it would be an obligation to give a generic. Much as it may be referring to a Rolex gold watch, but still, there are several thousands, millions of Rolex gold watch. So the delivery of any of this would be fulfillment of the obligation. But if I say, I will give you a Rolex gold watch, that is owned by President Duterte, oh, which was given to me as a souvenir when I uh, visited him immediately after he was elected. This time, the object of the real obligation to give becomes determinate. It appears from my explanation and maybe from what you have so far read that it is very easy for you to be able to determine whether the object of the prestation is specific or generic. But in CD law, you still need to apply a criterion to be able to finally conclude as to whether the object of the prestation is really specific or generic. Now, again, why is it important? Bakit importante pa yan? As you will learn, all right, there are provisions that should be applied in regard to obligation to deliver real uh, obligations to deliver a thing, that is specific, and those provisions that should be applied in cases the obligation is to deliver a generic. We will, that's why I, I uh, drew here some kind of a table so it will be easier for you. We will, we will uh, fill in the columns uh, with uh, the number the number of the provisions that should be applicable. Okay. So what is that criterion? Another criterion which Tolentino proposes. You see, when it becomes specific 
and determinate, we insisted that it is unique, one of a kind. Wala nang iba. It cannot be substituted with another. Isa lang talaga yan. So when you talk of a real obligation to deliver a specific object, that means that fulfillment will entail you to deliver that object that you will learn later on. Hindi mo pwedeng palitan niya ng iba. Correct? So, but if you are obliged to deliver a generic or indeterminate object, you are required only to take one of the millions that are available of the same class or genus. So for example, I will give you a car. So any car will do to comply with the obligation. Correct. But if I say, I will give you the car that is owned by Bin Pulang with plate number so and so in color red, you will note that fulfillment obviously would only entail you to deliver that very car. And you cannot deliver another. Although, as you will learn, is it may be of the same class or genus. Now, that being the case, you ask the question now, what if the thing that is to be delivered before there is fulfillment is lost. Patay. Is lost. What is the effect on the obligation? Does it extinguish the obligation? Or could the obligation still subsist and be enforceable? Now you will realize that it depends on what the nature of the object of the prestation was. Because if the object of the prestation was indeterminate or generic, the loss of the thing that you intended initially to deliver in fulfillment of the obligation will not extinguish the obligation. You see the picture? All right. Let's talk about it. Let's give you an example. I promise I am to give you a Vios Toyota 2021 model. Is that specific or generic? Obviously, generic. Now, imagine you have now this Vios Toyota unit in your possession which you intend to deliver in fulfillment of your obligation. But before you could do that, it is lost. Now, the cost of the loss is at this point irrelevant. Basta nawala. What they were trying to say, irrelevant. Irrelevance of the cost of the loss. Because later, you will find out that there will be the necessity of determining the cost for purposes of the application of Article 1170, damages. Pero we don't talk about that at this moment. Uh, when you talk of the cost, it could either be the fault of the debtor himself or by some event that was unforeseen or may have been foreseen but the debtor could not avoid. You understand? Now, uh, saka na, uh, that, that difference will come in later. Lang. But at that point, as I stress, okay, uh, it is irrelevant. But the question is, so, what is important here is for you to realize that if the thing I intended to fulfill To deliver is lost. Does did that extinguish my obligation? No. 
It did not. Why? Because I will have to just substitute it with another of its kind or uh, part of its genus. I will just have to get another Toyota Vius car. That's it. So there is still possibility legally of fulfilling the obligation. But if the real obligation is to deliver a specific object, so I will give you my Toyota Vios with this plate number, color this at the moment is parked in my garage at home. Specific. So, if I, if, if I could fulfill, before I could fulfill it, that very, very car is lost. Again, the cost is not uh, significant or relevant. What becomes of my obligation? It becomes impossible impossible dream why because i could no longer fulfill that real obligation to deliver that very car as i cannot substitute it with another because my obligation consisted of the delivery of that very car and no other even if the others may be of its same class or genus so what is there for the criterion that Tolentino is insisting that we should still apply in determining whether the real obligation would be to deliver a specific or generic he says that if before delivery, the thing is lost, okay, and results to impossibility of the fulfillment as it cannot be substituted with another, then that is specific or determined. But, but, if the thing intended to be delivered okay, is lost and from the tenor, of the obligation it may be substituted with another of the same class or genus therefore not extinguishing the obligation then the object is indeterminate now it is agreed that in civil law the genus never perishes Ang ibig sabihin yan, no matter how many times you get to sub to replace the thing that you are supposed to deliver, there will be no instance when such genus be extinguished. Kaya, Take note of this, although there would be some exception, take note of this, ha? ha? Uh, a real obligation, tingnan, ito na ang difference dito ngayon, meron na kaagad, important difference. A real obligation to deliver a generic object is never extinguished or rendered impossible by the loss of the thing intended to be delivered. In a real obligation, however, to deliver a specific or, or determinate object, the loss of the thing, which is the object of the prestation, will extinguish the obligation as it would render it impossible. Now, no, irrespective of the cause, kahit ano ang kausa. Why am I stressing that? Because there are some authors who insists that it depends now on the cost of the loss. <laughs> they are wrong. I am right. 
How do you know? Because I am your teacher. Follow me. Read my books. It is important for me to show you because that is how we get to identify the third. So, in effect, in order to really be able to ascertain what type of object the prestation in regard to the uh, prestation to give, whether specific or generic, you ask the question, if the thing that is intended to be delivered is lost, extinguishes or renders it impossible, it is the same thing. But if the thing that was intended to be delivered in fulfillment of the obligation is lost, but would not ex make the obligation impossible, kasi pwede namang palitan ng iba, no matter how many times, then that is a generic or indeterminate obligation. Uh, uh, all right, I'll give you another example of James in the term. Let's say, I owe you 500,000 pesos. So money is generic, obviously. Generic yan. Now, so I have now the 500,000 pesos cash. We have it with me. Oh, I am on the way to hand it over to you. I have 500,000 pesos. Unfortunately, before you get to get it, before I get to actually deliver to you. That is why later we will also have to know the concept of delivery because it is very important for purposes of determining on whether or not there would still be liabilities between us. Oh, so I, before I get to deliver it, it is lost. Inagaw sa akin na misplace ko, na flash ko sa kubeta, patay, hinangin, lumipad yung kwarta, pinagkagawa na, wala na. Does that extinguish my obligation to you? No! I will just have to come up with another bundle of 500,000 pesos. Why? Because the object, money, 500,000 pesos is obviously generic, not specific, in accordance with how the real obligation was constituted. Okay, so applying this, it will lead us now to the third. I'll give you this. So here it, here it is. Assuming that the tenor of my obligation is to deliver one of my five Arabian horses that you will find in my stables, or in my farm. Five, I will deliver one. Five referred to those that are in my stables in my farm. The question now is, what is the nature of the thing that is to be delivered? Is it specific? Is it generic? Let's apply the criterion. Imagine that the thing intended to be delivered is lost. Assuming from the five, I intended to deliver horse number one. So, as I was leading the horse out of her stable, unfortunately, the horse stepped on a banana peel. Nadulas. Oh, nabubo. Patay. Question. Did that extinguish my obligation on the basis of the tenor of how the real obligation was constituted? Answer, no. Why? Because 
I will be obliged to replace it with any of the remaining four. So, could you consider the first course as specific, or could you refer to my obligation now as a real obligation to deliver specific? Answer, no. It did not pass the criterion. Remember the criterion? If the thing intended to be delivered is lost, irrespective of the cause, that's it. It renders the obligation impossible. Then specific, yeah. But in this case, the first horse intended to be delivered is lost, but did not result to the extinguishment of the obligation because you still have four others that could come in as described by the object of the prestation. So in the wedding specific. All right, now, could it be generic? Now remember, ha, huh? it will not render it impossible. Meaning the loss of the thing intended would not render it impossible because you could substitute it with another of the same class and genus. And in this case, we agreed, according to civil law, genus never perishes. So ibig sabihin, no matter how many times you lost the thing you intended to do and substitute it, you will always have something to substitute which will be in accord with the description of the real obligation. So let's talk about it. Would that be the same case in so far as the example? So let's talk about so first horse, nadulas, nabuvo, patay. Substitute it with the remaining four. So you pick up horse number two. Kaya lang ito si horse number two eh. Eh, 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 shoot up pala ni horse number one. And when he saw his loved one there lying dead, lifeless, nagwala si horse number two, paragawa, as a consequence of which he started kicking left and right and, and hit the posts of the stables to make the whole story short, it was a disaster. He hit the main, you know, foundations of the stable, resulting to the roof collapsing on all the four courses. Buti na lang, alis pa ako. Hindi ako nabagsakan ng bubog. But the roof collapsed on the four courses, killing them all instantly. Patay. Now, is the obligation extinguished or could it still be insisted that fulfillment is still possible? Answer? From the tenor of the obligation, the obligation is also rendered impossible. Extinguished na rin. You can no longer get another horse. Not within that group which was described in the tenor of the obligation. Tabi natin, di ba? To deliver one of my five horses. So, if all these five are lost, you cannot get one outside. In effect, what I'm trying to point out, it is not specific, neither is it generic. So what is it? Uh, it is code. Sabi ko nga sa inyo, ito si lalaki, ito si babae. The tao, ito si alanganin. Torrentino refers to this as the limited Generic, generic 
object. Uh, so we need to identify this. As, as I, um, it's always possible that uh, you encounter this type of an obligation. And therefore, if there be some legal issues that may arise, you really need to know exactly how to resolve the issue by identifying the laws, mga batas, the provisions that would be properly applicable. The problem is, as you will later realize, we could point exactly the provisions that are applicable to real obligations to deliver specific uh, as distinguished from those provisions that are applicable only to real obligation to deliver generic. Unfortunately, as I may mention, the civil code did not foresee the possibility of the limited generic object as a consequence of this, the absence of any express provision okay, instructing its application for issues, for resolution of issues that will involve the delivery of limited generic objects. Is that a nominal? Ewa ba, ano natin marisog yan din kung hindi natin alam kung anong batas ang dapat natin gamitin? That is where we will need to be analytical. We need to determine exactly the proper interpretation by going into the spirit, the purpose of each of the provisions that are expressly applicable to either. And, and analyze on the basis of what we understand regarding this third type, it would also be applicable to it. In the end of the lecture, I will be able to write down all the provisions. But this is what I am trying to point out. The necessity for us to first classify them. So as there would be no confusion regarding provisions that are only applicable to this but not this, to this but not that, and knowing exactly by some analysis, by going deep into the spirit or the purpose, what would be applicable to this. Okay, oh, I hope that is quite clear. All right, all right. Now, let us go through the provisions. The first provisions that we need to deal with would be those that gives us the instructions on how. This chapter would be all about how to fulfill the obligation. But before we go into it, let me now raise the issue. Why is it important? for the debtor particularly to know exactly and to follow how the obligation is to be fulfilled. Can he not, you know, perform in another manner that suits him? Now, for practical reasons, obviously not. Can you imagine in so far as an obligation to pay income taxes, if a taxpayer, although realizing that he has that obligation, will be allowed to fulfill it in a manner that suits him. Oh, so, Yari, I have income tax liability to pay BIR the amount of 250,000 pesos. I will pay it. How? By giving the BIR people 100 pesos every day until it is fully paid for. Oh, hello? Or, oh, oh, sige. Ayaw mo, sige. Gagawin kong 10 pesos a day until the 250 pesos is paid off. 
eh mas mahal pa yung resibo. Maka, sakit ulo yan in support. For example, can I just to my children who have the right to compel me to give support, decide that, oh, support, ayan, oh, siyang daan, linggo-linggo, yan ang support ko, tama na yan. Hanap na kayo ng matitira nyo, hanap na kayo ng mga kain ninyo, ng uh, mabibilin yung damit. Ho! Huh? 100 pesos! Aba eh, aba eh, support naman yan. So, practical purposes, it cannot be left. And the legal, this is very important, take note, which is what we will be concerned about because later it will be related to the concept of delay. Okay? The legal, that if that debtor is able to fulfill the obligation in accordance with how it is required, either by the provisions of the law or agreement it pertains to contracts, then you will see that the creditor, creditor will now have to will now have to honor an obligation on his part. So it creates an obligation on the part of the creditor. And what is this obligation? What is the prestation to do? What is the creditor supposed to do? The creditor is now duty bound by law to accept and release the debtor from the juridical time. I repeat, the legal reason why it is important for the debtor to fulfill the obligation strictly in accordance with the manner that is prescribed to by the provisions of the law or by agreement of the parties in cases of contract is it results to an obligation on the part of the creditor prestation to do to accept and release the debtor from the juridical time. What I'm trying to point out, class, is if it is properly, legally, in accordance with how the law prescribes or agreement of parties, the creditor has no option but to accept and to release the debtor from the juridical time. Yeah. That is why if you uh, complied with the assignment of having read the provision you encountered in Article 1169 delay the concept of more as it can be which pertains to the delay on the part of the creditor. Because that is what could happen if the creditor without justification refuses to accept the fulfillment by the debtor of the obligation, which now creates an obligation on the part of the creditor due to the fulfillment in accordance with law or agreement, he incurs delay. Mura as he can. So, it is therefore very important that we know exactly what is expected of the debtor in the fulfillment of the prestation to give. All right, so we ask the question now, how? Alam na namin reason. So we need to follow instructions. We have identified the existence of the obligation. 
We need now to know how. I've explained to you why it is important to know the how. So, let's take it at a time. You will refer to the law. Also, again, you will find out these are really common sense. But again, the necessity of transforming them into positive laws. So, as lawyers, you will have to point to them so that it is clear that there is a cause of action to compel fulfillment. Diba? There is that cause of action to compel fulfillment. So, initially, let's talk about specific determinate. How do you fulfill? So, isa sabi, eh, natural sir, yun na. Hindi. So, I promise to deliver to you my car with plate number so and so. So, how do you fulfill it? So as to give rise to the obligation of the creditor to accept and release me, the debtor, from your radical time. So, immediately, obviously, common sense. If you deliver that car, you cannot. So, if I get another car and try now to deliver it to you, the question is, do you have that obligation to accept it and release me from the time? No. The obligation is not established as my fulfilling the obligation to deliver a specific object is not how it is required by law. Do you understand? But if I deliver to you exactly that car referred to as per our agreement. So, dinala ko may coach sa iyo. Can you now refuse to accept it? At this time, you cannot. There is now that obligation on your part to accept, to do the accepting and releasing me from the juridical time. So, that's exactly. So, do you need the law? No, alam mo na eh. But of course, again, para merong kang basis for a cost of action. It's there in the law. That's exactly what the law says. Where it is, where is it? You will find it in Article 1244 of the Civil Code. See? 1244 is nothing more than just a description of what we have already talked about what you know already in regard to the manner of fulfilling an obligation to deliver a specific object. Okay, so what does Article 1244 tell you? So, to be to be precise about this, let us read it together. 1244, you see, the debtor of a thing cannot compel, you see, the word of the civil code, cannot compel. Why? Because if uh, it was properly fulfilled, then the debtor can compel. So, the debtor of, the, of a thing cannot compel the creditor to receive a different one. They talk. Although the latter may be of the same value as or more valuable than that which is due. You see? Now, what is the interpretation of that in layman's terms? Exactly what we have discussed. If I am to deliver to you that car, Dios, with this plate number, that is the only way that I could fulfill to which I can compel you to accept it. What if I decide not to deliver that car? And I... I I now am trying to deliver to a Porsche, my goodness gracious, much, much more valuable than the Vios. But here am I. I am now delivering this Porsche to you in fulfillment of my original obligation to deliver that specific Vios. The question is, would that in any way now require you 
as creditor to accept? Answer, no! Because according to 1244, I cannot substitute it with another, even if it is of the same value or much, much more valuable than what I promise to give you. That's what it means. 1244. 1244. You understand? So, if I insisted on the Porsche, can you refuse to accept it? Yes. Even if it would make you so stupid. Stupid. But... It is your right to refuse. But if I get to deliver exactly that same car we agreed upon, can you refuse to accept it now? Because you want a Porsche instead? <laughs> Some palanque talk on the planet. I can force you. I'll show it into your ass. Tagalog, isuktok ko yan sa butas ng put mo. Ipilit ko yan. Because if you insist on not accepting and releasing me from the tie, you will know as we go along the provisions, there is a cause of action on my part against you. Mora si Piendi, where I get to also hold you liable for damages. So, in effect, my dears, uh, in so far as the fulfillment of an obligation to deliver a specific object, how many ways or means does the law allow you in a way that will create the obligation on the part of the creditor to accept and release me. Meaning, my right to force you to accept it. Only one. Just one. The delivery of the very thing as agreed to in the obligation to deliver a specific object. Because 1244 says it cannot be substituted by something which is of equal value or even much, much more valuable than what has been established or referred to. See, 1244. That's very important. You remember that? Sabine Sigur. Um, but that is very important. So that is your juridical tie. The source, the law itself. Cause of action, positive law. Now, this time, how about if we are to deliver a generic or indeterminate object? How do we get to fulfill it again in accordance with the law? In order that we be able to force or compel the creditor to accept it. Meaning, so as it will create now an obligation on the part of the creditor again to do, to accept and to release me from the juridical tie. Okay. So how? So I said you, I will deliver to you a 2021 Toyota Vios, period. What is the nature of the object of the presentation? This time, it is clearly generic. As I am only promising the delivery of one of the class or genus. So any 2021 Toyota Vios would suffice as a valid and proper fulfillment of the obligation. Okay? Again, without referring to the law, common sense. 
can you now deliver a what you call now a locally made car or a car made in china which is of less value or deliver something that is not in par with a bios let's say a tricycle or a scooter abay hey, no again common sense but you see that is exactly again what the law tells you regarding manner of how to fulfill the obligation to deliver a generic hobby. this time you get to uh, you get to find or see that provision in article wala na yung aking it is in article 1246 you have all that your article uh, where did i put my ah here 1246 so we put here 1246 oh 1246 all right so pick up your civil code again so we get to read it together 1246 tells you when the obligation consists in the delivery of an indeterminate or generic object right whose quality and circumstances have not been stated the creditor or okay, note of this cannot demand a thing of superior in quality neither can the debtor deliver a thing of inferior quality Although what it tells you is exactly what you know already, but there is much more if you try to analyze the provision. Because when we ask as to how many times the law allows a debtor to properly fulfill an obligation to deliver a specific object, We answered only one on the basis on 1244. This time, if we get to ask the same question, based from 1246, how many times or or how many ways does the provision of the law allow the debtor to fulfill the obligation to which the creditor would have the obligation to accept and deliver or ways by which the debtor could force could compel the creditor to accept how many okay tingnan niyo ha let's talk about money money is generic i owe you 50000 pesos generic yan. All right. How could I fulfill or how should I fulfill so as I can compel you to accept? Now, I deliver to you as payment of the 50,000 pesos. 25,000 pesos. Itong bayad ko, oh, 25 mil lang nga. Question. You, the creditor, do you have an obligation to accept it? Answer, no. You may opt not to accept it, but <laughs> on the side, katangahan yan, na hindi mo tatanggap din yan. Kahit pa paano, pera din yan. Ang ibig kong sabihin, ha? tanggapin mo rin. Although, you have a right not to because i am delivering something that is less valuable you get the point well means then uh may on coming uh, chinese na client na uh, may mga debtor ang utang sa kanila million million eh, ang problema dito sa mga Filipino-Chinese nito sometimes they 
enter into contacts of this magnitude of millions of pesos, you know, uh, millions of cash transferring from one hand to another without any documentation. All depends on the honor of the word. Yung ka lang, ang problema ngayon, hindi na nagbabayaran. So, uh, one time, there was this good Chinese client of my father. I heard my father talking to him over the phone because the Chinese client of his uh, was now uh, being offered by his debtor as payment for an outstanding loan of over 10 million pesos, an amount of only 500,000 pesos. So, the Chinese now are being, ano, Adomi, ah, antito ka itong, oh, pautang natin itong, taong tamo ito, metateng, walang, pala ba, honor? Oh, antito ka nga yung Adomi, uh, buto ba yan? Uh, 500,000 lang, bayan lang naman ito, Adomi, tanggap ko ba ito? Sam, may sagot ng tatay ko, abay, Mr. Cheng, Tanggapin mo na yan! Kwarta din yan! Ang bayad mo pa yan sa akin! Mamaya, wala ka na mismo ni isang sentimong makuha. Tanggap mo na, Mr. Cheng. Pero, sabi mo, okay, habol mo pa, balance. Hindi mo pa siya pakawala. Kailangan niya pa, bayad, balance, utang iyo. Yan, kailangan gagawin mo yan. Do you understand? So, tagapin ko. Malay mo, yun na lang talaga ang pera niya na at least of the 10 million na bawasan ng 500,000 yung lugi mo. Okay, so, obviously, if the amount I am now handing over to you is only 25, for my obligation of 50, you can refuse it. Now, if I give you 50 for the 50, can you still refuse it? Answer, no more. Bubun talima. Aman talamin. Ay, suk, suk, suk. Wait, no. I can force you to accept it now. Now, this time, look into my eyes. I owe you 50,000. Here. I am giving you 100,000 pesos. Say you know. Ngayon, rog ka nang makulit. Question. Can I compel you to accept? Or do you still have an option to decline? 50,000 debt you are being paid for, uh, you are being given a hundred thousand for a fifty thousand indebtedness. Can I compel you or may you still refuse? Pag refuse mo yun, so sampalin kita ng pera. I may take no of what the provision tells you. I will read it to you again. It tells you that the creditor cannot demand a thing of superior in quality. Neither can the debtor deliver a thing of inferior. Does it have, does it say anything about the prohibition for the debtor? to opt to deliver something of superior. Nothing. What is prohibited? The creditor demanding 100,000 for the 50,000 debt, malion, or the debtor opting to pay 25,000 for the 50,000 debt, malion. But there is nothing there that you will see where I cannot insist on paying you 
100,000 pesos. Common sense na lang yan. Kung ayaw mo yung sobra, eh di tanggapin mo yung 100,000 tapos ibalik mo yung sobrang yan. But the point is, there is that obligation to accept and to release the debtor from the juridical tax. So in effect, if you get to be asked the question, how many ways does the law 1246 allow the debtor to fulfill an obligation to deliver a generic object? There are two. One, to deliver that of the same value, of the same kind, genus, and to deliver something more valuable. Okay? I think uh, that is very clear. Okay. So, very clear. What are the laws that we should consider to be able to know exactly how we are to fulfill real obligation, deliver specific, deliver generic, deliver specific 1244, deliver generic 1246. The problem is, what provision do we apply for purposes of obligation to deliver a limited generic? As I have said, there is nothing that you will find in the code that expressly, clearly instructs you to apply to this type as this was never foreseen. So, what do you get to apply? Now, a thorough analysis of the nature itself and on the basis of what you have so far understood regarding these two types, you will immediately conclude and I tell you that what would be more applicable between the two will obviously be Article 1244. Yan na lang muna ang kailangan nating gamitin insofar as the manner of fulfilling an obligation to deliver a limited generic object. Why? Because in this case, it would have some similarities with this in regard to only choosing from a limited number of a class and cannot go beyond what is no longer included. That is why, I repeat, as between the two, it appears that this limited generic object's manner of fulfillment would be similar to the provisions that or or the provisions on specific would be applicable to it. So that is in so far what you have here in the board 1244, 1246, 1244 again is what we refer to really as the principal principal obligation or uh, the main prestation principal obligation or main prestation why are there still secondary supplemental that is where you now become different from the ordinary person whom I mentioned, I would have the age of discernment of knowing exactly what to do or what is right to be done. Diba? Kasi ito ko bolsin, diba? Okay? But, okay, hanggang doon nang sila, kayo, you will find out that aside from this principal obligation, okay, Ostensibly, it appears to be only referring to the delivery of the thing itself. But you will find out from the provision. Meron pa palang mga supplemental duties that the debtor need 
to comply. So we will discuss now what these supplemental duties are, all of which you will find in chapter 